Uh, speaking of fine on Crunchyroll, yes, Kaiju number eight, the anime. We gave it the old two episode rule. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. So this um, uh, this is uh, an interesting series, I thought, uh, or you know, interesting start to the series. So it's uh, basically set okay. in a world of uh, where um, uh, kaiju are. Uh, or a thing and uh they've, they've been they attack japan pretty regularly and there's a there's a group of um special forces type people who uh they don't wear they don't wear mech suits they don't wear um uh you know you know any kind of robot suits or anything they're they just have really big powerful guns that can take out the kaiju right now you get a little bit of this at the end of the second episode the suits are special it's just um it's weird. Like they, they wear these suits that are powered off of their own key almost is the best way to like put it, or yeah. like their own natural energy. They're midi chlorians, whatever you whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but they, they don't like in the two episodes we watch, they don't really get into it. No, and uh yeah, it, it's yeah, it's still pretty early. Um but they but we meet uh the, the main character, um and I'm spacing on his name. Um, as am i uh but he's uh he's in his 30s and um they uh, uh, kafka habino kafka yeah and uh he's um oh okay so the ninja says the suits are um uh mech suits and the weapons are made from okay and um so uh so kafka um is working uh He's not one of the one of the special soldiers, uh, although he wanted to be one, but he couldn't pass the entrance exam. So he's working the cleanup duty. Uh, so he's one of the guys who you know chops the the kaiju up and you know takes all the parts out and everything. Kind of like uh, it's that sort of reminded me of the uh, the Ron Perlman and um, uh, Pacific Rim. Oh, see, I, I yeah. thought you were going to compare it to Damage Control from the Marvel comics. Oh, oh, well, that too. Yeah, Damage Control. Yeah, um, but uh, but yeah. So they're uh, so they so they have to you know they cut it up using all this uh, different power tools. And of course, Kafka. Uh, one day he gets uh, gets put on the the uh, intestine duty, <laughs> <laughs> which is animated rather interestingly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would almost be curious to watch this on Blu-ray to see if they actually animated all of the uh, awful and waste spewing out of the intestines, or if yeah. they just if it was all digital all the way down. Yeah, yeah, I'd be curious to see that too. Yeah, um, a lot of censorship going on. Yeah, there is. Yeah, um, and so then he. Uh, and then Kafka gets a. There's a new young guy uh, starts working there, um, and I'm spacing on his name too. Um, uh, uh, let's see, Kafka, uh, Reno, Reno. Okay, yeah, and so. Um, and he's he basically calls him sir all the time cuz he's like his obviously his superior um right he he's very much like a typical um he he has a sort of uh respectfulness and deference that you usually see in like uh japanese salaryman characters or japanese military characters yeah yeah and um and so he uh so they they start working together and then um the they, they they have another kai, like a small kaiju attack where uh starts coming after them <clears throat> and uh and during this they meet uh they or they encounter um uh one of the of course kafka gets really hurt he gets hurt really badly mm -hmm. and the the leader of one of the teams is uh his old uh kafka's old childhood friend mina and uh, when they were kids, uh, a, a kaiju attacked their their town, and they decided together that they were going to become part of this special team. And 
Right. Yeah. And uh, she got there, and she's like the world's number one hero. Yeah. And he's on intestine duty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But uh. But then they. So then they're in the hospital, and uh, and then the Kafka sees this little flying kaiju thing. Mm-hmm. And he says, "Found you." And. <laughs> 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 And then he turns into the titular kaiju number eight. Yes. Um, yeah, he's a like a human form kaiju. Um, and uh, he has all of the, the attributes of a kaiju, but uh, without the mindless monsterness. Yes. Uh, and uh, so, so here's what, I, what I'll say about this show. So, it's, so it's, it has some heavy themes it's dealing with. Uh, you know, it's like a big... So, you know, it's a... Not a end of the world scenario, but it's it actually really reminds me of my hero academia in terms of stakes and tone. Mm-hmm. It's like kaiju are a problem, but they're a problem that the uh, military has a solution for. Yeah. But uh, and over the court, so I, I read the manga a while back. Uh, I eventually petered out on it, but I decided that it would be fun to see how they adapted it into a show. Okay. Because I kind of felt like the the manga kind of almost had the X Men ninety seven problem where it felt like a lot of the plot was on fast forward. Mm. So I actually kind of thought to myself, you know, being animated might actually help it because they might introduce some more space and filler. Mm. Okay, so it might help the pacing a bit. Um, but uh, so it's a, it's a serious scenario, and it's also like it's serious for him. He's older. He, you know, this is his last chance to maybe get into the military yeah. and do what he wanted to do. When he turns into Kaiju Number Eight, it's like it's like it. He becomes a gag character almost. Yeah, yeah, because he he uh, it, it, he does. The, there's the standard trope of you know where where somebody gets you know, superpowers, and then he doesn't know how to use them at first, and he just makes the situation worse. You know, he causes a lot of damage, and... Right. Yeah, and he scares people, yeah. An old man sees them, and he tries to... uh, He accidentally knocks the wall down. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Trying to close the door. Yeah. He goes to open the window. He proceeds to rip the side of the building off. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, And then, like, uh, he feels like, oh, I have to pee. Well, where are you going to pee out of? I don't see any junk down there. I don't uh, know. And then it's through his nipples. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, oh yeah, and, and of course he does the thing you'd kind of expect, where he goes and saves a uh, he saves a small child from a from a small kaiju. <laughs> yeah. a surprisingly bloody scene where he punches it once and uh, he one punch mans it uh, yeah. into a literal rain of blood. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and Ninja says he's happy devil man. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Mm. Um and then at the end of the second episode, uh, he he does get his chance to rejoin uh, to take the test one more time, which he's gotten to take the test before. He just always fails the second part. Right. Yeah. Um and uh they meet a they meet a new character at the end of it, uh, Kikoru, uh, who is basically a standard stock Sundari character. Yes, uh, and she's even got the the pigtail hair, the, <laughs> the pigtail hair. Yeah. Yep. So, um, Daniel, what do you think of this show? Like, it's it's entertaining. Yeah, I, I think it's really good. Um, I'm curious to see, uh, you know, how they'll uh, how they'll uh, how they'll work in his powers in with uh, being him being in the military. Um, obviously, there'll probably be some instances where he'll like have to he might have to use his powers, but he can't be around anybody. And the you know it's the old you know secret identity thing where he's like, oh no, I got you know, nobody can see me like that. You know. Yeah, it's uh, so Kaiju number eight. As soon as I saw that and saw his design, I said, "Oh, this is an Ultra Seven reference," because in Ultraman and Ultra Seven and stuff like that, that's that's the most typical setup is that you have a guy who's on a military unit who 
is possessed by Ultraman, whatever that means for the show, or he is secretly Ultraman. And uh, you wonder why he isn't uh, being a, uh, how, why he isn't being court martialed for constantly being off duty. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Ninja, and Ninja is right. There is more to her once you find out about her. But yeah, as, as of episode two, she's just kind of a bratty Sundari. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what I will say is that this what this is what really struck me watching this is that Kafka feels like he's taking the situation less seriously than uh, his buddy does. Yeah, it's, yeah. He'll 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 just suddenly shift into his his kaiju form. And he's like, you can't. Kind of form right now. Stop that! <laughs> right, and it's it's weird. Like you wonder if it's because he's kind of lackadaisical because he kind of thought he would never go anywhere, but it doesn't feel like he's treating this like his last shot, like it is, where he now has this secret edge. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. That's it, definitely a little uh, a little inconsistent with the character, but um, I. I yeah, I, I wonder. I wonder if that'll get that'll get better as the show progresses. Yeah, honestly, couldn't tell you. Um, uh. Production wise, I will say that I like and don't like the animation at the same time. Uh. Cause, like the actual fights are fluidly done. The kaiju's are very well done. Yeah, is yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Is it just me, or is there something sort of weird about how the faces are drawn? Yeah. Um, like, like I'm going to quickly uh, grab a couple of images so that you, the viewer, can decide. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to remember, trying to think of what other show that reminds me of. I'll say that it's kind of different than the manga because, like, if, if just from like the way the manga is done, if you told me, oh yeah, so the creator was uh, at one point a production assistant for my hero academia i would believe you yeah uh ninja says um he said that people were actually mad about the change in the art style and he said the man the manga art's better okay so it wasn't just me going hey, that isn't what those characters look like yeah like it's not entirely different but it's different enough to draw attention yeah yeah, I, I can't quite put my finger on it. Right? It's like this weird, uh, uncanny valley of uh, facial drawing. Yeah. Let's see if I can get a good manga panel here where they're showing the faces. I mean, of course, if I do a quick image search, everybody's trying to show off the uh, kaiju fight scenes, which is not what I'm after here. No. <laughs> uh, I just I just want to see with like the characters looking like hey, characters. Yeah, that that's close enough. Um with no context, this wouldn't be a huge spoiler because, of course, they're going to fight Kaiju at some point. Yeah. Like, I would say that that's a better facial structure than what we're seeing here. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it feels it feels nitpicky to throw the baby out with the back with the bath water. Yeah. Uh, the eyes are bigger in the manga, and they're more and more expressive. Yeah. The, but there's also just like almost flatness to the faces. Yeah, yeah. It's like if, if unless yeah, if, if you're a manga fanatic and you notice that and it bothers you, then I guess keep reading the comic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you if you don't have a hole up or if you don't have a if you don't, if you don't have a stick up your butt like I do about character consistency, then you'll probably have a really good time because it is an exciting show with a cool premise. Yeah, yeah. Like the the main character acting kind of goofy. I guess he kind of acted a little bit goofy before, but it's still it just feels weird that he isn't seriously up in this uh, the way you'd expect. Uh, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Th thanks to Rebel Moon, this is absolutely not the worst thing that any of us watched this week. That's true, <laughs> and it is it is more or less worthy of your time. Yes, I, I think so too. Yeah. 